Training. We can hear you. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Shimiyana. I think from uh, from Rwanda. So today we are going to do a training. We're going to proceed with the training, uh, our previous training for DHSA VSS certification. So it's a, it's one. So, sorry for that. So, if you have your camera turned on, kindly you can switch it off. Maybe later, when we have, a, we'll have a session for interacting amongst ourselves. But for our case today, we're going just to do. I'll be done presenting. Yes, we can hear you, William from BDS. Okay, thank you, William. So I'll begin by introducing myself. My name is uh, Shelton Kipwech. I'm from the Tech Support Department of Tahua Technology. So I'm located at, the, at 67 Muridi Road, Westlands. So we have had a previous sessions on uh, DHSA training. And uh, yesterday we had three sessions. So we had quite a number for the first and the second session. And then the third session, people decided to disappear. <laughs> But today we're going to we'll be having two sessions today, a 30, 30 minutes session, then we do we resume at uh, eleven forty five for the, another session. The reason why the reason why uh, we decide to do theory today is that we have realized that uh, there's quite a lot of theory to cover for, for the training part of of the certification. That's why we need to hurry up considering. Okay, there's an echo. Um, can you, you can tell me if the echo is uh, is off from uh, Ga, Gashu, Gashuka. Yes, if you can still hear echo, you can uh, just tell me. So we realized that the the the, the training is uh, is more a lot of theory. So we decided to do uh, we focus more on theory. Then uh, we'll have other sessions for for practical part of it. Considering that we have been doing a tra uh, practical sessions on Saturdays. So this today's will be sessions will be different. It will be theory. Also next week we are going to do a theory part. Okay now, thank you. Yeah. So uh, today also we are going to do theory parts to cover more ground on the on the training of uh, for this course. So a question from Ben Odiang. Yeah, Ben Odiang, maybe you can uh, you can do a uh, um, interaction in the chat section. So for for questions, maybe can uh, we can we can get to we'll get to 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 interact. Uh, uh, maybe a, a later we do a session on that. Well, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. What's the issue? Uh, okay. Uh, as we proceed, eh? Yes. Uh, just now uh, have uh, a concern. Uh, there are some basics that we are not getting clear. Would you mind that uh, after doing this training? Eh? Yes. Maybe one of these fine weekends, a bit uh, Saturday or so. We uh, yes. just, we we do it practically in uh, uh, physically now a working environment. environment. Like, oh yeah, uh, yeah. For example. Uh, Yes, yes, I, I understand. For for that case, we have been doing a, 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 a practical session. So last week we had a practical at our offices in Mitsumi. So this applicable for those who are in Kenya. Yes. Oh, fine. Okay, I think we can we can resume now. So I'm going to share. Uh, let me let me just share you with you the the overall cost cost uh, outline. So there are quite quite a number of slides that we need to cover for the case. That's why we need to hurry more. Do hurry uh, on uh, on the theory part of it. 
also people get tired when uh, when you do uh, quite a lot of theory for a long period of time. So this is the course material that you need to cover. So you can you can zoom your screens. For my case, I cannot zoom uh, because it's an explorer. So you see, we have to do a, a technical basic, a product introduction. So we have to cover all these slides. So I need to rush on them and considering uh, in the first folder. Hmm. So, so we need to cover all this information. We'll need to do the assess. We need to do alarm, alarm system success control for the certifications, just not only video part of it, just that one. Okay, now I think that's uh, enough for uh, introduction. So we, we can proceed. So the exam will be, I repeat again, will be 60, 60%, will be, first mark is 60%. It will cover theory and practical part of it. For those who are in different countries, we'll organize for the same because we have our technicians coming to those sites. We can uh, do certification for you. Also, uh, the video is, uh, the, the session is recorded. It will be available online with the link that I shared with the, with the joining link for the training. So if you need to do a reference letter, you just check it on YouTube. It, it, it's available for downloads. And uh, in case you face anything, you can just contact me directly. Okay, now we, we, we continue. So today we're going to do basic knowledge of network. I'll be rushing on this case. So this is just a basic networking, which will, uh, it's just a foundation on uh, on the certification part of it. So by the end, I should be able to understand uh, switches. I think most of you are aware of this. Uh, we'll be able to do about different functions, no applications of build, the video surveillance with the, 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 the networking area. So the basic concepts of network we're going to handle today. Um, so we have we have different types of networks. We have a local area network. Uh, we have uh, we have metropolitan metropolitan area network, wide area network. So uh, most of the cases you do uh you are you are most of the cases if about eighty or ninety or seventy percent of surveillance are done in a local area network with uh, a few doing wide area network side. That is going cases for P2P and remote access. So a definition of a computer network, combination of different computers to, to achieve communication. So uh, all of the key parts you need to know about the about distribution in this part of uh, definition of the network. So LAN, MAN, or one. So a LAN is a local area network. If you have a switch in an, if you have a switch, connect your computer to a switch and a uh, and maybe other devices like uh, another PC, you get to to do a LAN. LAN is the is the is the foundation of a network, that low level part of the network. Uh, then you'll pro as you'll proceed like this. So you begin with the LAN, proceed next to MAN, and the one. So uh, a MAN metropolitan area network is a big bigger size version of the LAN, and the one is the wide area network. Uh, commonly referred to as the internet. So from the layman's part to the internet part. Uh, a network topology, we have different types of topology that, that exist. We have a star ring topology, bus mesh topology. So a star topology is just, uh, you'd, um, considering how a star appear, how a star looks like, so the topology, I think it, it uh, it exhibits its name from this point. So you have your computers connecting to a common switch in a star format. Not necessarily because the ports will, will be basically go to the ports of the switch. So just one central center device then connecting the end sides. A ring topology would have a case where you have devices interconnecting with each other to form a ring-like structure, a bus topology. For a bus topology, kind, uh, typically you'll have a, a common Common side, common connection point for 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 devices. So you have a, a bus line that will connect all the nodes with each other. A mesh is just a hybrid 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 topology. Considering a mesh can do a ring topology and star port topology, can combine that so to form this kind of mesh structure. 
So OSI reference model, um, I think we are back to school. Uh, OSI, the OSI reference model, uh, you can do you can do a search more more search on the same of this because most of the companies that do certifications need to have to need to need you to have an, a basic knowledge of the network, including the OSI model and the TCP/IP model. The reason why you have the OSI model is because of troubleshooting cases and help you to, be, to build a, uh, that firm foundation of uh, the networking state. So for the OSI model, uh, you can search on the same. You need to get to know uh, the OSI reference model. It's called the OSI reference model. So from the physical layer, MAC layer, network layer, transport layer session, presentation and application layer. So it's a total of seven layers. So where, where the physical layer represents the basic, the basic, the, the basic part of the network, considering about cabling. The, um, so the data handle at this point is uh, bits in terms of bits. So this is the zeros and ones, because considering a cable will typically transmit a, a digital signal of zeros and ones. So when we are doing the OSI reference model, for we are, we are talking about IP cameras, not the HD ones, because HD will do analog signal, it's going to do a digital signal. Digital signal is about zeros and ones. So the physical layer. Uh, MAC layer. So all this information, um, I think we need to know because uh, for the certification part of it, it will cover it will cover the theory, more, more, more theory. So you get need to know a lot of theory for this case. So for the application layer, it's the way the user interacts. Presentation layer is formatting of data to be able for the user side. The session layer, um, session layer will handle sessions between different computers. Like for the case, maybe one, if you are streaming a video from the internet, how, how you receive that service the session layer will do that handling of information. So from the end side and this end side. So the transport side, transport layer will uh, will work with the routing of information. So this transport side is where you do routing, most of the cases routing here. Yeah. So the format of a packet and you need to know this side. So in the transport layer, we have TCP and UDP. Okay, we can you can you can do a, a, a research more on uh, the OSI reference model. So a TCP/IP model is just like the OSI model. The difference is that this one is an old version, old version. So TCP/IP came first. It was created by DOD. It was doing the it's a simplified version of OSI. So it it was the first layer. So we get you know network layer network network interface network layer. So this is the uh, the equivalent of physical layer and data link layer. So you can do a research more on this. So uh, the, uh, an Ethernet frame um, from this uh, from the from the references model either TCP or IP or 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 OSI model from this data link layer here. We deal with the frames, so a frame, a frame, a frame format would look like this. So a frame is used to do a communications between. Uh, if you have your computer connected to a switch, the computer will send frames to the switch. Not, yeah, it will do communi communication between uh, uh, um, the NIC cards without information going outside the network. It will do with using an Ethernet frame. So the format of a frame looks like this. You can do a research on the same. I'll not dive into this because we are doing a rush on the same. So the information available in the internet is the same that we're presenting at this point. So MAC address. So MAC address is a, as a unique identifier for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the device in the network. So MAC address are unique in the, unique in the network. So uh, apart from that, for our devices, we have uh, serial numbers. Serial numbers are also unique for every device 
in the which the company produces. So an IP address. So an IP address is used at uh, at this network layer of the of the model of the reference model. So an, an IP address format will typically look like this. So at least you get to know the basic about IP address IP addressing. So th those those numbers that you put like uh, one eight two one sixty eight the comma the ten the zero the zero dot one those are the IP addresses for the, the devices. So an IP address will help communicating between different devices in the network. We have a big network or a local area network with a router in in the network and uh, the router will use the IP address to identify devices in the network. So different versions, we have IP version 6 and IP version 4. So now our devices uses IP version, uh, IP version 6 at the end side. So if you have an NVR, a DVR, it will typically use uh, IP version 4, sorry, IP version 4. Whereas we have devices that support IP version 6. So these devices include like the advertising devices like uh, LCD signature device. You can see some of the devices like the ones in Sarit Center. So that is a uh, that's, that's the advertisement device that can use IP version version 6. So you still you can do a translation for the IP version 4 to version 6 using your router. So a minute. So an IP address, uh, introduction to IP address. So if you have an IP address of zeros, it will, mix, it will mean all network address. That is all the devices in the network. If you have an IP address of all ones, it means a broadcast for the network. So like, uh, if you say 192.168.255, uh, that is a broadcast address. So, so um, I had a friend of mine who did uh, who was configuring video intercom in the network, and uh, the the friend uh, decided to to use one eight two dot one sixty eight dot one dot two five five as the IP address for one of the video. So we were trying to access the device, but it was not. So so the the, the uh, uh, I later I later told the friend just in the IP address considering a broadcast address will not be used in the network as then IP address for for a device. Okay, we resume. Mm. So an IP address is formation between a um an subnet mask. So a full IP address will have an IP address for the device subnet mask to identify which network the device belongs to and a gateway. So from Gashua is ask, asking for me to, to, to send the slides. Um, unfortunately, I wanted to send the slides to you guys, but I can't because of uh, rights issues in the company. So um, if I try sending the the device, the, 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 the slides to you, you will not be able to use them because you have it, it is highly protected. So you, so you require to log in and to the domain network. So about about addressing um uh, maybe if you are not comfortable, I think you can do a research on this because um or maybe you can just talk roughly about it. Because even most of the devices that you will configure typically, you don't need to dive more or more into the subnetting and do in the submitting part of the IP addresses. But how do you get a subnet address? So you get the way you get a subnet address, you combine, you do a bit of operation between the IP address and the subnet mask. This one will give you a broadcast address. Submit or subnetwork address, that is the gateway which you use at the gateway. And the broadcast address, if you do the OR operation, get the broadcast address. 
how to calculate the host number of subnet. So uh, a case a case where you'd, you'd need to do a calculation for host number is the case that's maybe where you are doing large number of devices and you need to put all those devices into one network. Considering it's good to have one network for for surveillance and everything into one network to avoid those complexities of you just simplify your work. So if you want to calculate the number of devices, so host number in the subnetwork, we will just do two, two raised to n minus two. Minus two here is the number is the IP address for the network and the broadcast address. And we can do more research on this. I'll, I'll just uh, skip. Okay, so um, this is important. So while doing configuration for most of the devices, like uh, if you want to log into the uh, most devices that support web interface, like cameras, uh, video video intercom VTOs, and um, devices like um, maybe you want to log into a switch, you might encounter a problem while you're trying to log into the web interface of uh, a device like video, but you cannot get a response back to it. The reason as to why you're getting that is because you're not in the same network segment. So if you want to configure devices, typically set your IP address to be in the same network. So you would do a search on config tool, get to see the IP address for the device, then configure your computer to be in the same network segment as the, as the device. So the way you do configuration, you go to network adapter, this for the Windows case, uh, then you do changing for the IP information at this point. So no need, no need to set the gateway. So common commands, pinging the local area network. So while doing troubleshooting for, for your access to devices, network products, you need to do troubleshooting from the basic level of the network. That's why you need to get to know about the TCP IP model. So you troubleshoot from the first layer, that's the physical layer. You confirm that the cabling is very well, and you also confirm that your network adapter is, is okay. So how you do you test your computer's network adapter is by pinging the local host, this is one on one and two and six. 127.0.0.1. So if you get a response from the NIC card, meaning your network interface card, where you plug in your cable is being fine. So address the resolution protocol is used for to identify devices in the network. So ARP mostly is used by switches to get to know which devices are in the network and also try to communicate between those devices. So what a, a switch will do is just, who is on it, well, this IP address, tell me your MAC address. So your PC will reply with the ARP request and leaving the MAC address. That's why the switch will be able to forward information very fast. So when you are, if you, for those who have done a Cisco certification or CCN, we realize that this uh, this part is, is core, but for our case, we just need to know what ARP is because most of the devices are made to be user-friendly and uh, easier for you to configure. So you just need to know what is an ARP and the MAC address information. So we're going to dive into basic principles of the switch. So a reminder, we'll do a break at at 11. Then we resume at 11.45. So today we are going to have two sessions. We need to rush the theory part of it. So we need to, we're going to have two sessions, a break for 10 minutes at 11.35. Also, the uh, video recording, uh, the video, the training is recorded and will be available online on YouTube. So, a um, uh, switch application. So, we're going to do a basic uh, knowledge of a switch. So, a switch application uh, will be used in, uh, in a network where you need to interconnect devices. So a topology, basic topology using a switch operation is indicated from the diagram you can see. So you able to see. So if you are not seeing that, if you're not able to see you can and you can detach the chat, chat section so that we get to help each other. So, 
So you can see for this case, we have a switch connecting a camera, the PTZ camera, or is it, is it a speedom or a PTZ? So we did. So some point, some time back, we did a training on the cameras. So this is a PTZ with, a, with an AR, connecting a IP phone, different desktop. So switch will do interconnection of devices in the network. So a MAC address, uh, learning and forwarding. So this is a working principle of, uh, of, of a switch. So it, it has different working principles. So learning and forwarding is where the switch will just get information, uh, read the, 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 the address and for the information based on the MAC address of the devices. So for this, a, a, a typical scenario is like Hoste will send information. So at the beginning, MAC address is totally blank. So we connect the device, which will do an ARP request. If you get back about the MAC address of the, of the devices, once the, the switch gets to know the MAC addresses for different devices, it will record it in the MAC table, then use that information to do a learning and forwarding. Forwarding of information, sorry. So we have different types of switch. So you would, uh, you would typically categorize your switch either as a layer, layer one, layer two, or layer three. But um, what we have, we have um, this, all these three cameras. So a, a layer two switch, you just, uh, so if you're going to do, you can check on our website to, uh, for transmission side, we have switches that, you have layer two switch, which is unmanaged, meaning you can't log into the web interface. The switch just will do its functions automatically. Then we have layer two managed switch. So this is the layer two plus switch. So this, this, this is a kind of switch that will do uh, functions like uh, bringing the PO information, uh, doing my address populating by yourself, and do custom settings in the switch. And then we have layer three switch, which will do, apart from doing switches, switching, it will do, it will do uh, routing, routing information. So that's how you get to classify these different types of switches. So uh, typically you'd use a layer two switch in a basic network, like uh, using a cameras, Dacom, where you don't need to focus more on the uh, speeds, just need to do, get that enough communication. Also for the layer two switches, we have switches that can do different speeds. So you get to know that. So maybe you can no without function only has VLAN, STP, IGMP, small snooping, and so on. So a VLAN is just categorizing the devices into one virtual local area network. Okay, you can see you can see the different type of switches that we have. So I think most of you have interacted with this, the first one. So these are unmanaged switch, meaning you can't. There's no need for you to do configuration for the switch, considering everything has been done automatically in the switch. So we have a smart switch. So this one, uh, you can, uh, some essential features like VLAN, STP, quality of service, and access list. So all these features are basic software features for switches with smart support web management method, meaning you can log in on the web interface for this switch and do configuration. So manage switch, a wide range of features. So for manage switch, you can do uh, advanced features like the routing. So, um, so for the classification of switches, we have uh, switches that uh, exist at different uh, levels of the network. So we have access player switch, so this one will connect to the end devices, like uh, cameras, uh, indoor monitors, etc. Then we have convergence layer switch. So this this type of uh, design is called hierarchical network design, where you have different levels of network. So access, core, and distribution layer. So access layer, convergence layer, and the core layer. So the, the speeds for this and the performance for switches, as it goes up, 
the performance and speed increases. Switches performance. So we have uh, switches that support Ethernet ports, SSD ports, SSD these on our fiber ports, uh, combination of SFP and uh, and Ethernet port. So for this case, for the cases for combo port is about uh, doing SFP as the uplink port while doing the see these ones these are SFP ports. So doing SFP as the uplink ports while doing this one as the access ports. So we have different types of switches standard for Ethernet and gigabit. Gigabit speeds up to a thousand gigabytes. A thousand megabytes, sorry. We have Ethernet. Uh, we, we'll get to know the, the naming convention of different products so that you know when you're purchasing a device, by reading the name, you'll be able to know if, if, what these devices offer, what are the speeds, and so on. So a switch performance uh, will be based on the uh, bandwidth it can support, the backplane bandwidth, the switching capacity, packet forwarding rates, and the buffer. So you need to, to know this one while well, doing a suggestion for clients or, or doing suggestion for projects that require switches. So okay, that's why you have a project that requires switches. You need to be able to identify a switch, know what that switch performance offers, so that at the end result, you don't have uh, to get into that problem where you're having issues with the switch, saying the switch is bad or something like that because of your choices. So, Okay, uh, backplane width. So the backplane bandwidth refers to the, the bus bandwidth speed available for communication between line cards and chassis on the switch. So the larger the better for the backplane uh, width. A switching capacity is uh, refers with to inf how the inf first the information trans uh, is transmitted between the CPU and the bus. So the bus is the, it's like, sim let's say the port. So the CPU and the ports. So this switching capacity is, is smaller than backplane, but they are equal to each other in fixed port number switch. So packet forwarding rate. So maybe you can get to know the, the difference between a packet forwarding rate and switching capacity. So if the packet forwarding rate uh, is greater or equal to value, calculated by the following formula, it means. So um. We're going to take a break, then we'll come and uh, recheck this one, then we proceed. So we take a break for 10 minutes, then we resume at, uh, at, uh, at 11.45. So come back for the same. Recording stopped. <laughs> 